Let's start blow units. Uh, uh, maybe Jacob would be good. I never tested Jacob or any of the chapter 10 units have, so... I can do that now. Oh yeah, Jacob is a world type. It's 5 star anyways. Alright, let's do this. A lone wolf flees across the seemingly endless tundra. He's exhausted, but he keeps running. Ugh. 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 Though he prides himself on his mastery of moving in the snow, Jorge Okamui's hunters are relentless. <laughs> Is that all you can do, Jorge Okamui? Ugh. Horikei Okami turns to his opponent, who is howling with laughter. He stands on the ground and readies a deadly kick. Roll of the Hunter! Rule of Glaciation! That again? You've been driven this far and still haven't figured it out. Frosts of Kamui Kotan! Lash out! Gallant Guardian! Ah! Huh? Snow dances through the air in re representation of the power coursing through Horikei Okami's legs. That power can freeze and shatter all that stands before it. At least, that should have been the case. Cowl of the Mother, protect me. Scatter. Snow the lands of Kitez. Horikei Okami's frost is belted into mere wind, disappearing into thin air. His own chance at attack has been wasted. <laughs> Ugh. That sacred artifact it can indicate my attack. But why? Why? It's as though he knows every move I'll make before I even make it. Of course I do. Horikei Okami. I am your shadow. G the warrior's face indeed looks identical to Horikei Okami's under the bright afternoon sun. My name is Volk Vislav, the werewolf the Czar. The shadow of the silver wolf, the distant future long since torn away from you by the world. I am your perfect rival. You are what I will become? I once formed a conclusion. Before long, you two shall come to form your own. Your quest to raise a lone hero to act as the founding sacrifice for the world. Is flawed. Horikei Okami, deeply hurt, turns his face to the snowy ground. It's almost as if he is trying to keep himself from seeing the reality before him. I believe that all children should grow to become a heroic sacrifice to found a new world. The wolf readies his blade and plunges the tip at Horikei Okami, even as he stresses his words home. On the field, they spread out life, winnowing the soul from the body. On the bloodstained Namiga, the blank were sewn with bane, sewn with the bones of the children of the tundra. These children! <laughs> so you do recognize some of them, as you should. Now recall. The shadows of countless children appear behind the shadow of Therian. There. Why are they here? All these children are. Horikei Okami, my other half. These are the innocent children you offered up to the world. Now is the time for your reckoning. Horikei Okami reaches for the blade slung on his hip, but he hesitates. The children lovingly embrace the silver wolf as he cries out in anguish. Horikei Okami is swallowed by the silhouettes of the dead children. Hmm. The battle is over, and the Lupine Therian places his mace on his back. Now that it is done, an eye nearby calls out to him. You've done well, my werewolf czar, Zezlav. Heh, <laughs> that was a trifle of a job, but thanks for your kind words. They mean a lot, coming from you, Lord Piran. 
as their representative of Tez. <laughs> yes, that is the name I bear. That of the Lord of Thunder, struck down in Kitez. By... Uh, Lolos. Lolos. That is precisely why my rule begins. I scattered across the land like snow, violating anything at all. Invading thoughts, ravaging worlds. Sullying unstained devotion and memory itself, I shall profane even the sacred artifacts of those who would challenge my dominion over thunder. The Lupine Therian looks upon the transient named Theron with unwavering faith, smiling savagely. Lord Perrin, would it please you if I were to offer you my unwavering devotion? So you should, Volk. So you should. Forget the one who ser you served and come stand by my side and said. Together, we will violate this world so shoddily pieced together. This twisted Tokyo. Perrin's voice rings out. It's as though he wishes for a faraway summon or something to hear his declaration. Come together, conquerors, marauders, and anarchists, for the end of days are upon us. We are the invaders. It is time to spread the flames of war across this world and subjugate this Tokyo. Hit on. If only you'll ever look up, your feet will easily be swept out from beneath you. See, so he's part of the invaders too. Another Lupine Therian appears beside Perrin's massive form. Ah, Temujin. Someone appears to be watching you from the shadows. The light furred. Therian knocks an arrow and. Uh, this is Shinya! Cupid! No! Ah! The arrows that Cupid and Temujin release clash in the air, both utterly destroyed by the impact. Ha! 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 You! You are the Reserve of Olympus, the next representative in line. You caused me great harm during the last loop. Do you think I will allow you to get the better of me twice? You and your kin, heirs to Cronus, the line of Olympus's representatives. The first in line, Zeus, cannot enter this Tokyo thanks to my prior arrival here. Securing the slot for the rule and rule we share. I see, so he's the reason why Zeus and Odin, well maybe just Zeus, cannot come. To Tokyo. Uh, furthermore, I wield a sacred artifact on my shoulder, created by the genius who faced this to turn aside disaster and prolong life. Okay, so in the beginning it was established that no two uh, role and rule has ever been mixed together, and now we know the reason. It's because they, they can exist, but just not in the same world, not in the same system. You, Shinya Tenoji. Proxy of Zeus, my rival. Uh, proxy of Zeus, my rival, Lord of Thunder. You, I shall incinerate. Not so fast, Piran. I have marked this curve for my young. I do not forfeit my prey lightly. That's right. He did mark his prey during uh, one of the Valentine's quests, I think. Yeah, Valentine's uh, panic. The Lupine Therian knows Temujin spits these words at Nasperen. Flash of rage in his eyes. <laughs> Is that how you want it, Timujin? Then let us have a contest to see who will be the true invader. No, more importantly, the reason I originally summoned I was originally summoned to this Tokyo. As Velas of Kitez, my one true rival, my poet, my dearly part departed. This is Volos. I mean they're the same thing. Velas and Volos are like identical films. I think it's like just a synonym for name, but you know, in this game, uh, the mythology goes that you know, Volos went to steal like Perrin's shit, including like his wife and family or something. <laughs> I forget. Uh, and then Perrin got mad and des like, decided to destroy his crops or something, and so he hides back in <laughs> among the dirt. So it's like a battle between the d dirt and the sky, and uh, he dies, Volos, but then he revives again as part of uh, one of the dirt. And I guess in this mythology, in this postmo world, uh, Bolus is the, re the revived form of Velas. 
the single vessel that can carry on Velus's bearings, the one called Arison. I will invade like fire and burn you alive. You will know the name of Heron. Let's go, Cupid. There's nothing we can do here. We need to hurry to meet Kalki and Tadamati. Not to mention. I wonder where you are and how you're holding up, Arison. Uh huh. So Valentine Panic did happen. Or maybe, like, Genia just knows. Uh, without Arison. Master Claude, we have a visitor from the summoners. Very well, let them in. As you wish. The manager of the Ikebukuro Coliseum, Snow, guides your friend to a small underground room. So, you finally have arrived. Welcome, summoner. Moritaka, you're safe! Everyone else, okay? Where's Master? Not together? Gardner, I am so happy to see you're all right. Do not worry about Arthur. However, judging by your present state, have every guild aside from us summoners being lashing out at the Zerkos? Uh, what the heck? I thought the Berserkers dissolved. I guess they reformed. I mean, they were defeated for sure. They lost their portal, but they reclaimed it, so I guess... Um, with their portal, and with all the members, to, I guess it's easy to reform a build. It would be dishonest to say that is untrue. We Berserkers are unable to fight back, and thus, an easy target for Marauders. Others have obtained information regarding our members and have been tearing us to shreds with knowledge of our vulnerabilities. We have become painfully aware of just how it feels to become prey for vultures. Garmer, guard dog, Garmer, say Claude, but everyone went somewhere. At present, we are the only members in residence. Even Jorge Okami has gone missing. All that we are able to do in our current state is stall for time. There is likely little meaning in even that, however. I cannot believe that the Berserkers could have met such a fate while us summoners have been spared. If your enemies know so much, then how come they weren't able to find you hiding here? Is it possible that... Is this tied to your request that I bring Shuichi with me to this meeting? Moritaka casts a glance towards the dead-eyed Shuichi, whom he has brought along. My boy. It's actually quite simple, you see. We made a certain request of the wise men in the past. We requested they create a safe house even the greatest genius could not find. Deep within Ikebukuro's subterranean labyrinth. We requested that it be created in such a location that no one could predict its whereabouts, no matter what their knowledge is. No matter their knowledge of us. I see. Much of what you say escapes me, but I have come to realize that this labyrinth is truly impregnable. Be that as it may, your guildmaster truly seems to be quite the desirable trophy. Are you speaking of Addison? Perhaps it would be more accurate to say that we speak of the memories which reside inside of him. As far as the world representatives are concerned, whoever houses those memories is likely a mere vessel, in the traditional sense. Now, as you are now aware, Ikebuka lacks manpower at present. We have no hand to play. Yet yeah, we have one thing to offer. Our blueprints suggest there is a secret room in this labyrinth in which none of us have set foot. It was placed there by the former guild master of the wise men, now in Kahoots with the East. Oh, never mind. Okay, so the East. I got it wrong before. My bad. The East is. Yeah, those, those bitches, Michael and all of them. The West are the monger mongers. The South is us. Ish. Or maybe we're not. Or maybe we're unaffiliated and we just haven't left the South yet. But the South was the. Was the that was where uh, Ota War was, with the crafters, so I'm not sure. What could be inside the room? Oh, now I get it, the three, those, the east, west, the south, uh, so come. What could be inside that room? We believe that answer may be a means of overturning the outcome. We wish to have a, such an advantage. Moritaka Inuzuka, vice guild master of the wise men, Shuichi Togo. That is the reason we have invited you here today. We will gladly assist you. After all, we also seek to understand the situation in which we've found ourselves. 
By mustering our strength, the allied girls must come out on top of these trials. Just do as you please. I don't care anymore. None of this concerns me. Shuichi! My brother, he abandoned me. I have no reason to go on living. Uh. Why do you cling so dearly to the bonds of blood, Shuichi? You are supposed to be the Vice Guild Master. That is precisely why you weren't able to become the Guild Master's vessel during the war in this Tokyo. Get yourself together, Shuichi! How much longer do you plan to continue this foolish char charade of yours? This does not concern you, Moritaka. It doesn't concern me? How could you say that? How dare you say that to me? We shed blood and sweat together training at the dojo. You have always lived for your younger brother. I am aware of the struggle that decision has brought upon you. We have crossed blades countless times. I, more than any other, know how deeply you care for your brother. Your brother is surely still alive. He must be somewhere in this Tokyo. Ah, I'll never. I'll never again see the one I have lost. One with whom I will never be able to speak ever again. Mori... Taka... I... The workshop is silent again, as though your previous fight never even happened. You reflect on your previous battle, trying to organize your thoughts in the midst of this confusion. Alright, little Salman. Our last conversation was cut short. As you think of it, you pull out your phone to summon little Salmon. However, you're unable to perform the summoning, even though you aren't in a battle zone. Huh? Where's little Salmon? You try over and over, but to no avail. It's almost like he's no longer there. Little Salmon? Why isn't he coming out? Little Salmon? After several attempts, a summoning circle appears before you. For some reason, a sword appears at your feet instead of Little Salmon. This is... It's the sword we fought it with? What you have summoned is your sword, your sacred artifact. The cracks inflicted upon it remain. No, it's just the uh, boundless tail. The cracks inflicted upon it remain, exactly as you last saw it. What the? I closed the app. Why is it still? Now that I think about it. I see. If he summoned his sword, that means he should swing battle. Isn't that dragon you're talking to a part of you that's been cut off? Is it because I broke my sword? Did something happen to Lil Salmon? Lil Salmon? There is no response. The sound of your panic tapping echoes throughout the quiet workshop. A moment later, though, the front door of the workshop explodes, and <laughs> what was one silence is now cacophony. You pick up your crack sword as the noise assaults you. What is that? That isn't just any noise. But yeah, uh, I was able to summon my sword for some reason, even though we're not in, in that battle anymore, so it's weird. Smoke spills from the battered doorway, and several men march into the view. Those men. Uno, dos, tres, ole! Defying all logic, a troop of luchadors <laughs> march into the room. Okay, okay, chapter one host mode, logic, okay. They shout out cheerfully, dressed in matching military genetics. It's uh, Ole! Andale! It's time for the Lucha Libre! Tope Suicida! A head first assault by the cheerful Lucha Donas. I am ad libbing pronunciation, if that wasn't obvious. <laughs> the transients who just made a flamboyant entrance aim their sacred artifact right at you. 
They wield rubber sacred artifacts, which fire wrap around you, instructing about your body. Crap! They got me! What are these, rubber bands? Are you trying to restrain me? Ole! Oh. They rush you with a perfectly coordinated attack, barraging you with a flurry of overhead chops and rain of airborne kicks. Uh, what? This doesn't hurt at all. Are you guys for real now? Their well turned muscles and flashing moves seem to liven up the air with every motion. With the cacophony of cries still ringing out within the Kamata workshop, the quiet workshop is quickly transformed into a wrestling room. Whoa, look at those moves. If only I could use my sword. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think of Lucha Libre? We still have much to show you. Launch Vestos! Another rubber sacred artifact is fired at you, completely incapacitating you. Ha ha ha! Too slow! This is our chance. Nah. Uno, dos, tres! The wrestlers all shout in unison as they leap in the air. They are preparing an aerial takedown. However... Stop! I won't let you lay a finger on him. Quineres! Ah! Another newcomer appears at the back of the workshop to interrupt up this comical scene battle that none of us threaten to life. <laughs> the massive man pushes off the ground, leaping even higher into the air than the ground than the group of luchadors. Kuh? Kuh? Is it Kuh or Kuh? Come on, it's my French. Kuh? We're flying like eagles, yet you soar even higher? I am perfection. I was created to be greater than all others. Yeah. The newcomer soars even higher than the airborne wrestlers and unleashes a scorching hot kick on them with pulverizing force. What was that animation? <laughs> Were they really spinning? <laughs> ah, Dios mio, que caliente! That was one hot kick. We're blasting off again. <laughs> The figure lands on the ground and runs to your side. He easily untangles you from the rubber. <laughs> uh, maybe I should make my thumbnails more like this. <laughs> All legs, no head. Uh, uh, the wrestlers plummet head first into a pile of machinery and theatrically pose out, pass out. Are you alright? It looks like I got here just in time, Addison. The man looks at you, spawn Galton. Are you? Are you Hephaestus? Yeah, you're so freaking cool, but how do you know my name? First of all, I am honored by your words of kindness. If only my creator could hear. Ahem. I apologize. Ignore my outburst. We need to get out of here now. Ah, uh, yes. I am Hephaestus. Huh. Okay, so it looks like he's not just his ideal image, but he's also acting as his re replacement in front of strangers. I am Hephaestus. I am a member of the Kamata Crafters. This place is not safe. Come with me if you want to live. Uh, but what about Ark? It's okay. I'll let the others know later. You can't fight in your currency, can you? Come on, hurry up! Mm, don't give me that evil eye. Ja 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 ha 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 ha. Aruro, who uses a chain? We're going to test out your skills in the ring. Huh? Where do you come from? Around the same time as your rescue, Ark is busy battling a group of wrestlers themselves. Uno, dos, dos, tres, ole! The troop of wrestlers laugh gaily as they fly through the air, aiming right for Ark. Their cheerfulness is strongly off, but that doesn't change how strong they are. If, if this keeps up... Ugh. Where are you? Please, be safe, Ark. You're shaking off the attackers and are being led deeper into the workshop. Finally, you hit a dead end. Have faced this, your saber. Check something and... Aha! Here we are. Stand right there, Arthur. Wait a second. How do you know my name? Yeah. Orders fulfilled. I have led him to the target location. Please, forgive me. For you are my creator's mama. Oh my god.
Huh? Just then the floor <laughs> drops out from- Okay, this is getting a bit too Tom and Jerry, uh, Looney Tunes style. The floor drops out from Nisa and you fall into a pit of darkness. Didn't this also happen to leaks in Fountain Jail? I have yet to read the official translation, but I did read the... The fan translation. フィニッシュ。さあ、これ、こんな続いてくるだい。2時間もの Uh, I don't want to deal with those bailing types though. Finish. Because. Oh wait, never mind, it's super advantageous. I'm forgetting myself. <laughs> Jacob's pretty neat. I can't believe you did that, you bitch. Uh, but yeah. Finish. Mm, literally, not one does anything. Well, I guess you could do that. Holy shit. Okay, though. ああ、いい。これ、本で見たやつです。ああ、いいわんこっちゃない。大丈夫。いくよ。見せてやる。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや
he did have memories of them. Oh, well, not maybe not memories, but he transformed into Babylon before. What's his connection to them? Are these what we're calling to me? Great reaches out for the golden chalice. Then, oh, what? There's a light inside of me. Break's fingers resonate as he touches the golden chalice, and as if in response, a light begins to swell inside of his chest. Is this? Is my body going to be torn apart again? Huh? Babylon? Okay, so it seems like... The memories are latching onto Break or something. And since he can transform his physical form into Babylon, I don't know what the connection is, but maybe we'll have like a, a, a Babylon imposter with Babylon's memories. <laughs> What's wrong? The crowd ain't gonna cheer for you if you don't cheer up your game. You look ridiculous in that clothing, and yet you're so strong. If this keeps up, using your stunning coordination, the wrestlers are driving Ark into a corner. Okay, but why? Who are these wrestlers? Reinforcements? Huh? <laughs> yeah, my body. I can't move. Ugh. Like a line of dominoes, the wrestlers fall dramatically, one after the other. What's going on? Is this poison gas? You got us good, Rudo. Nice move. Ugh. Wow, that was close. What happened, though? What's that smell? The scent reminds me of a distant past. Huh? What the fuck? You did well, mis amigos. I enjoyed seeing your lucha spirit. I swear to keep that spirit alive. <laughs> this match is... I ain't fucking it. This match is really starting to get interesting. <laughs> now then, let's lucha! A voice booms out over oddly energetic music playing through the workshop speaker to fill the room. What the heck is this? They all just keep coming. Meanwhile, down at the bottom of the pit, you're dropped into. Wake up. Wake up, mama. Uh, mama? You've awoken, mama. Please, forgive me if it's a little tight. Uh, I can't move. What are you going to do with me? Your hands and feet are bound to a chair. Your restraints are so tight that you can't move. I did not mean to cause you embarrassment, Mama, but it was necessary. Please forgive me, my beloved Mama. Mama? Does that mean mother? The man squeezes your hand affectionately. Oh, man. Is this really how I face this and... Uh, and Talos see the protagonist? How can grass? How can this grass from a server actually like? There's there's a, like a face this stand and a server and like there's already so much drawing with the whole like cuckoldry sort of thing with Talos and uh, face this, uh, but like on top of that now it's like they see the protagonist as their mother. There's just too too many. Mm, 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 mm. Never mind. Okay, I'm just gonna, moving on. Mama, at last we are able to meet. Another strange memory persona? I guess you take after your dad. <laughs> I don't recall giving birth. <laughs> Though it might be beyond your understanding, allow me to tell you a story, vessel of my mama. Let's say you are separated from someone forever. Someone important enough to risk your life for. Gratitude, regrets, all those other things you could not express. They all get stuck deep within your heart. Then, all of a sudden, someone identical appears. Their voice, their personality, even their scent is the same. Do you choose to disbelieve in their reincarnation, or do you simply suppress their feelings? I mean, he has a point. Like, we can always complain that, you know, they're seeing the soul inside them, but these people have, like, long-established relations behind them. It's, they wouldn't just let go of it just to respect the new individual. Of course they would latch on so tightly. 
He struggled to find an answer to his question. You might even have someone in mind of your own. Someone you may never meet again. So? I would truly be happy if you could accept these precious feelings of mine. Yeah, uh, well... So you want to play house with me? Investor or not? <laughs> I want to be left by you. Or an Easter adoption, let's go. Thank you. Wait, never mind. This is like mama love. Never, uh, 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 okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Nothing could ever make me happier than hearing those words. Even so, I do need a vessel. I know I'm asking something cruel of you, but I cannot leave my mama to die. Let me go! Ark is in danger! No. If I let you go, then you would head back to the battlefield, wouldn't you? I cannot let you jump back into the fray when you have no chance of surviving. You can't know that. Oh, but I do, Mama. You've already tried everything in the past loops. Whatever you tried, you couldn't change anything. I'm sure you have seen some memories from your past loops, say now. Everyone who pretended to be your friends and allies. They all brought harm to you in the end. You know about the loops? Of course, our summoning emblems have formed a connection to Tokyo, protecting us from similar smaller time loops, which eradicate our passes within battle zones. So, in a sense, the summoning emblems uh, that are bound to Tokyo are sort of like pillars. Kind of. You know? They retain memories. Uh, so the pact itself can be considered a pillar. Maybe? I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, it's something about the land of Tokyo itself. Not just like... You know, the rule of systems, but lit that, you know, just happened to surround Tokyo, but... Li the literal physical land of Tokyo. Uh, there's a connection with the summoning emblems. Unfortunately, they cannot withstand larger loops such as those that might encompass the entire world. Well, yeah, if the entire land of Tokyo is, like, within a larger loop, then, of course, like, the foundation of your pillar slash summoning emblem would also be reset. Uh, so the only reason pillars are special is because they're not part of a loop that exists, not part of a battle zone enclosure. Only those who cannot be swept away retain their memories after the loop is reset. Rooted in the earth, even as they pierce the sky, their sacred artifacts encompass the principles of pillars. <laughs> I mean, they're essentially the same even though uh, Shuichi is saying they're not. I mean. The only difference is they're divided by worlds, so you can loop an entire world, but if you're in another world, then it doesn't matter because those memories will still persist. I guess the real question is like, is it possible to have a loop that encompasses several worlds, like a, a multi-world uh, scale uh, loop? Hmm. Is your sacred artifact? It does not matter what kind of sacred artifact I have. I, and only I, will never deceive and slay m my very own mama. That much is certain. I am the only I am the only true ally you have, mama. The rest are all your foes. Please understand. Hephaestus pleads to you with earnest eyes. No deception lies within his intensity. I don't know everything, but I can presume. No one can best me when it comes to understanding the system. The system of Tokyo. The system that defines the rules of Tokyo, including uh, the, the rules it doesn't have, such as uh, how to handle exceptions. See, the loop happens because everyone wants the system to end the way they want it to. Okay. Wait, maybe I should just continue before making assumptions right now. The end is just dragged out continually, no matter how long or how many loops it takes. Maybe someone who staged this whole mess that is Tokyo made it that way. Either way, you're forced to face horrible deaths again and again, Mama. Everyone wants the system to end the way they want it to. 
the end is dragged out continuing no matter how long or how many moves it takes. I see. So, in past loops, I guess there has been no real victor. The only reason it keeps on looping is because someone among the contending uh, three, the south, the east, and the north, not the north, the south, the east, and the west, uh, well, you know, one of them, like, gets the upper hand, but then, you know, and they, they want, they're about to get their end they want, but instead, the other two uh, factions uh, decide they want to, they force a loop so that uh, they can uh, get the end they want. So I think that's the theory we can work on so far. Um, things are looping because the three keep on fighting for each other for uh, the loop they want. They're not letting the other person get the end they want. So it doesn't end because uh, they can't not all they can't all get the ending they want at the same time. So instead they just perpetuate it. I know what you're going to say. You're thinking that I would turn on you in the end, right? Don't worry, Mama. That will never happen. I have a device embedded in me that disables my movement if I even attempt to lay a hand on you. Didn't you just hold my hand a second ago? Device? What are you, a robot? I figure that this is the only way to gain your trust. From your point of view, I'm just a nobody you just met, aren't I? But I... I want to be loved by you. That's all. Please, I want you to hide here with me until the end of the, uh, this loop, Mama. If we can't escape the loop, then I want you to at least survive as long as possible in it by hiding down here. Huh. So maybe my death does not necessarily entail the end of the loop. It's really important though, because obviously the three factions uh, want something to do with the vessel that is myself. Uh, the East wanting uh, me to... I don't know, become the best of something, the top of something, I don't know. Uh, the South wanting to steal me away, and the West wanting perpetual war to go on. Uh, using me, but whatever it is, I'm a key factor. On his knees. On his knees. Mm -hmm. Never mind, I keep on remembering. Mama. Her face just begs with imploring eyes, while gently but firmly holding your hands. You have seen how I drove off those who came before us. I won't let anyone come near you. I know what is best for you. This is the only way you will not be murdered by the ones you love. I mean, this is like major psycho vibes in terms of ducking someone, tying them up, and locking them in, in the basement, and making sure no one else can see them. But in, under these circumstances, where millions of loops have happened, and like he's literally died a million times, like it's it's there is some amount of leniency I can say to this decision. And and you can recognize me, have faced this as your one and only son. But when the loop reoccurs, then I can be with everyone again. That one, Shira, and the others. Sheena. Mark. That's right. If you made a mistake, just redo it. If you keep going through the loop, one day you just might read the true ending. So please, Mama. Please give up on this current loop. Oh, oh, oh. Her face this is sobbing voice echoes sadly throughout the small room. What the heck? So you've given up. My, the guild master of the Meisman must have had it so hard. To be so unlucky in his choice of lieutenants, he had little choice but to bow his head to another guild as soon as possible. What did you just say? Claude's words spark a tiny light of will in Shuichi's eyes. Claude! What are you? You were never protecting your brother. It was you who were under his protection. What? There once was an experiment that modified children at birth to create humans fit to use sacred artifacts. Designer babies with sacred artifacts implanted in their bodies from the fetal stage. You, too, are the result of that experiment. Although both of you were des designated as failures, your younger brother showed some promising results. The reason for this was that your brother possesses a variety of sacred artifact. A, a variety of sacred artifact. A variety of sacred artifact. Oh, sorry. Like a, a, vari a variation. A, vari a variety of sacred artifact that is conceptually a pillar, is it not? <sighs> B 
Based on Fujimi Academy's data, the East conducted additional human experiments. Their fourth greatest success was your brother, an artificial pillar. A pillar to what? Hmm. Duo's power is to be able to reconstruct anything so long as he has the data. Any sort of world he wants. Maybe he... He is a pillar to not Tokyo, but of the planet Earth. And that's why, like... He can foresee features that extend beyond Tokyo, beyond its walls, and that sort of is the thing that is pinning him uh, to loops, uh, to retain his memories when loops wash over, away everything. Thus, your brother retained memories f of these loops. The fourth test subject, bearer of the fourth letter in the alphabet, D. Utilizing memories of the loops and with. Wait, what? Shuichi is. Uh, that doesn't matter. Utilizing memories of the loops and with help from the accomplices, from accomplices, you are able to escape the test facility in the east. And remained undetected by means of false identification, changing your names. Mm. How did you? It was supposed to be a secret shared only between Hongo Wiseman. No, between you and your brother. And then there was also your co-conspirator. It was a secret that only you three knew, or so you thought. This co-conspirator? Who could that be? Maybe Shiro? I'm not- no, he wouldn't divulge that. We would like to say that you shouldn't underestimate the Emperor of Ikebukuro. However, the truth is that your brother told us. You're lying! He can't have! You can deny it all you want, but you know that this is the only possibility. Your brother is truly a genius. He wouldn't be so careless as to leak such information. <laughs> hmm. Yet, we wondered why. Why would your brother tell us such a thing? What did the prodigy who built this Ikebukuro underground empire want from his client in volunteering such information? Shuichi Togo, with your bright mind, you already know the answer to that. You. Glaring at Claude, Shuichi tries to think of an answer that makes sense. You somehow became aware that you had lived before that you had lived before of the loop this Tokyo is caught in. The reason for this must be because the previous owner of your sacred artifact was No, let's see that for now. Based on your assumption, you are trying to recreate the environmental conditions of the app here in Ikebukuro. Well that's what happened chapter two. The purpose was to experiment on how to end the loop. Oh, so it wasn't just the Well, maybe the exception they summoned, Thor, through Kengo and Oniwaka, was a, like, a, a way, a test of how they could touch. One, of, one po of many possible ways they could end the loop. And also to figure out how to stay in the fight for as long as possible. Do go on. We encourage you. My brother must have thought that he was such a genius that his aid could keep the Ikebukuro guild in the game from longer in this loop. His aide. Him. He's talking to him. Okay, I see. He's being emboldened. Indirectly. Then he counted on you to tell the story to me, now that you are in this helpless state. And so he left information here that no one else, not even you, who made this request could figure out. There is only one possible explanation. He placed his faith in me. This domain holds a secret even the East can't discover, because only I can unravel my brother's thinking. He left this clue for me even while pretending to bow his head to those of the East who modified him. The fuel of Claude's provocation has given the motor that is Sushi's brain the jumpstart it needed to follow the threads of logic lying dormant within his stalled mind. Fuck! Shuichi's back! Spare us your raving. How can you be so sure when you have no basis for such a theory? The motor rubs and the engine roars for life. The slamming of that foot on pedal was the final impetus he needed to zoom ahead. Basis? I, I have all the bases I need. I am his brother. Have you gone mad? If that's all it takes to save him, then I would gladly go mad. The corner of the closet mouth curl upward with this smile. He proceeds to question Shuichi. We do wonder at all the things your brother may have considered during his journey through all the continuous loops. 
How many escapes has he made, all the while dragging a ball and chain like you? Plotting, scheming after scheme, all along knowing what would become himself in the end. How could he abandon you now then? He could have done that when he escaped. Perhaps we can tell you why. No, I don't need your speculation. That is something I will ask my brother myself. I thought too little of him. I burdened my brother. I made him carry the responsibility of countless loops. I will carry that weight this time and finish the loop. It's unforgivable. Not that forgiving one was ever an option. The unknown must be conquered by human intellect and converted into knowledge. Knowledge must stand above all else. Whatever these entities are, they will pay for looking down on it with disdain. I'll exterminate them all. I'll make them wall in regret in the deepest pits of hell. I kind of wish I knew what Shuichi sounds like. This might sound a bit too bulletproof. Shuichi turns to Claude. The look of despair has left his eyes. I, the vice guild master of Hongo Wiseman, will take charge of your petition to, to our guild. Very well then. We wish you the best of luck. You have my gratitude, Claude. It seems as though Shuichi's got his motivation back. Lighting up the spirits of those who fight is the only is the one and only purpose left for us. That's true. You are the Fervor Stroker, Emperor Zelots. But the final piece of every puzzle is none other than the Guildmaster of the Summoners. You, who lit a fire in our frozen hearts, you must be the one to lead the masses. Do you understand me now, Mama? I won't let us loop again. How can you still say that? You're going to die again! I've been charged to put an end to this never-ending war. You think you've been charged with ending the war? Sheena. Some have cried, reaching the end of the battles. Babylon, search her. Others despaired of their futility, but others fought until the very end. Rip as a thought. <laughs> Those memories and emotions passed on. Believe me by the next move. If not now, then never. I will finish it with this loop. Those memories are mine to carry. Your sword appears in your hand as if in response to your declaration. It begins to move of its own volition. Whoa, Bama's tail is moving. Did you do something, little salmon? Your broken sword moves as it is pulling you your hand, trying to cut through the ties that binds you. However, the strains loosen, untying themselves, then reconnect, restraining you once again. You're wasting your time, Mama. There is strength to the so you can't untie it. You are in possession of an astonishing amount of different roles, plus your own. 23 different forms of severance in total. I see, so they're all variations of severance. So I took precautions. I programmed I programmed the system to counter every single one of them. Okay, now you're just using system really nilly at this point. Distance, blood ties, control, gravity, beams, reality, and everything else you devise to sever, I can counter. Whoa, that's rather sore. How do you know about my artifact? Memories of previous loops? What don't you know? Those who remember everything you can and can't do. This is what it means to lose in information warfare. The others haven't gotten to you yet, but this is just a matter of time. When their other priorities are sorted out, they'll come after you, and you'll have no recourse against them. That is why I'm doing this. It is the only way. What? What is this light? It's the same as when I fought against Musashi. Is, is it happening again? That dragon came back? What? The sword you summoned is cracked, just as it was before. Yet now, you see within it the shadow of a dragon, different from the beast that lies cracked and dormant.
That dragon is the forest which breaks you free from your bindings. Those salmon? Thank you. Why? My creator analyzed all the data from previous loops and made these restraints to prevent you from breaking free. He made them so they could no, not be severed by the rules of running of any of the 23 other worlds. How? Uh, creator? Wait, will I, uh... Move, Buster! Ark and the others need my help. Ah, uh, I knew it. I knew I couldn't see keep you a secret from my beloved mama. Ah, uh, speak of the creator. Wait, you have a twin? Hmm. Yeah. I thought the best version we could play out the best scenario, but... Get back, Talos. I have faced this. Your creator command you. Yes, creator. As you wish. Who are you? you your Hephaestus? Yeah. That's right. I am Hephaestus, the real one. I am the hideous warlord. A booming roar echoes through the underground of the workshop. Your face is faceless and in your hand. The sword of yours, your sacred artifact, emits a sound beyond hearing, as if it is crumbling. What? What? Okay, let's go. My repose of vision. No battle.